Jamal Murray on your right, both stars for their teams, obviously, but what happened is they both tore their ACL around the same time. It was April of 2021 for Jamal Murray. It was June for Kawhi Leonard. Kawhi didn't have surgery for another month, so Murray's about two and a half to three months technically ahead of schedule from where Kawhi is, and so if this is what Murray looks like three and a half months ahead of Kawhi, it's great news for the Clippers, although everybody heals and rehabs at their own rate. Physically, Kawhi Leonard has looked very good now. It's just really about getting off the rust and adding the minutes for him on the floor. Yeah, well, well Murray is this too. He's 24. <laughs> Kawhi is 31. And, you know, has more wear and tear on that body, which requires a longer length of time to heal. So we got to take that into consideration, too, young man. Well, Kawhi has said they're going to enter a dark tunnel, or they're in it now. But this is, the, in his words, the uh, easy part, because now, for him, it's about playing basketball. He is sitting out tonight in hands for the last couple of ballgames, not due to a knee injury. Last week, I believe, against the San Antonio Spurs, as Murray misses everything, the ball goes back to the Clippers. Well, I mean, but you got to keep in mind this, and this is not an excuse, this is an explanation. If you haven't played the year, you don't go hard over the summer, your first initial five on five is not until training camp, which is limited. So when you're, you begin this path of going hard, you're going to have setbacks due to stiffness, soreness, and swelling, especially when you're talking about the lower limb. So you don't think the medical staff already anticipated that, that this was going to happen the first few months with Kawhi Leonard being that path that I just talked about. It's different if Kawhi was going hard over the summer and came into training camp. Those kind of elements would have been eased a little bit, not to say they'd be eliminated, but you know what, it, but all of a sudden going 505 at this level, man, it's, it's going to be some setbacks with him. Now, your definition of going hard is, is playing 515. His yeah. rehab schedule was relentless and it was multiple times a day, so he was ready physically for that but first it's a difference going. That's correct, but, it's he was, different. But, but he was prepared yeah. from a strength standpoint to, oh, yeah. to that go into absorb. training camp. But I remember Ty Lue was very curious about it. In fact, he altered the training camp schedule. The first thing the Clippers did was actually scrimmage that first day of practice. Usually you go through drills, you go through the offense, and Ty said, I was so curious to see what Kawhi was going to look like. He looked very good physically, but again, there's going to be a ton of rust, and as Jim pointed out, there's going to be setbacks. This is not a surprise. And again, around the corner, we're hoping that we'll be right back to the lineup for that guy, Ty Lue. Yeah. Four tenths of a second for Ish Smith and the Nuggets. They do say they got it off. Jack White looking for his first NBA hoop. Two to Covington. Great pass in the corner to Coffee for three. It is good for Amir Coffee. Nine for Coffee in 23 minutes. All nine, however, came after he switched out of one of the greatest sneakers of all time. He was wearing the 11 Concords to start the game. I've been told that those are PGs, not Donaldson. So he oh, does get a bit of a pass. Okay. <laughs> Although I find it interesting that Bam stepped back and knocks down the three. Wearing those classic sneakers, and that's what those would qualify under. It's different material, it's different flexibility. I was surprised when he brought them out. I was I was digging it, but I was surprised that I am not surprised that he did switch on the turn. 40 seconds to play in this one. Nuggets out in front, 114 to 101. Denver. They're going to prove the 8 and 5 on the year on the road. Say it again. 8 <laughs> and 5 on the road, and they have only played one game. So, a ton of games away from downtown Denver. You can have a plus mark in the road wins. You are going to do something special, especially with the special home court advantage that they have at altitude in Denver. Yeah. And you're able to be plus three on the road when you've dealt with some injuries and not your full complement of, you know, roster. Michael Porter Jr., of course, you don't see Bones Highland and be 
and they've seen it. And that means something. I mean, Bones may not be a household name, but as far as a backup point guard on the second unit, or what they expect, that's why they were able to, you know, kind of part ways with Monte Morris, knowing that they needed bigger wings to defend and do some different things, allow them to win. And Highland is a key component of that second unit. Got a good look there at DeAndre Jordan, center of your screen, all-time leader in games played for the Clippers, and one of the all-time great guys. Not in the rotation for Denver right now, but uh, happy for him to be in a winning situation. Nuggets will dribble this one out. They're going to prove the 12 and 7 on the year. Clippers are going to fall to 11 and 9. Clippers will get ready for Indiana on Sunday afternoon, which will not be an easy game for the Clippers and Ty Lue as the Clippers hoping help.